This is a lot of fun. My first time. Any advice on how to handle all of this hoopla with fans here at camp? Um, no, but carry a Sharpie with you, I'm sure. But um, it's just, it's great. It's a college atmosphere. They give the tickets away, but you have to have a ticket. So, um, because they got a capacity and stuff, and they reach capacity, they won't let Gosh. anybody else in. So, um, the team's dynamite. They're an easy crew to cheer for. People love them. Uh, the team loves each other. It's just a great vibe here. Um, even so, I've been in the building at One Bills Drive over in Buffalo. I've been there for since 1986 in one way, shape, or form. Wow. And I've said this on our show, too. I, I've, it's extremely well-run. It's an extremely well-run organization. And so the results are in the team. And, you know, there's no guarantees. Never says you're going to win a game, but yeah. they're winning a lot of games. They're winning a lot of games. You want them to win that big game, and that leads yeah. to that next game. Or just at least game. one more game, right? Just one more. We just want a little bit of improvement here. Now, every camp I'm going to, I'm picking a happy camper, like somebody that I'm really looking at. And it's Stephon Diggs because it yeah. seems like he's happy. I mm -hmm. hope so. I know the national media maybe was trying to draw some connections or some storylines after right. that playoff loss last year. But here's what he said a few days ago. He told the media, I feel I'm in a great space. A great place. I'm loved and I'm appreciated. At the end of the day, that's all I want. So, uh, you know, he's too good, too likable of a character, and too great of a wide receiver to have anything else but these 1,200, 1,300, 1,400 yard seasons to go on. Yeah, he he wears his emotions on his sleeve, yeah. and he does ride a little bit of a roller coaster. Yeah. You know, I think I think he was on a low when he was leaving uh, Minnesota. Everybody had this idea that he was irretrievable in Minnesota. I'm sure, Steph and. Kirk Cousins, they could have made it work with him in Minnesota easily because he's that kind of guy. He's ready to, to hug it out, you know, or have a hard conversation like they did uh, at minicamp this year. Um, he, he likes that, I think. And I think that having conversations with the guys around him, knowing exactly what they're having and being heard, and I think that says speaks to what he said. He knows he's loved and appreciated. He, you know, he also has a voice, right? And they made him a team captain. That was a big deal for him. He takes it really seriously. And I think he really relishes the fact that there is a head coach here and a quarterback and teammates who will sit down and listen to what he has to say. And that means a lot to him. And then there's what he does on the field. I don't know how he sort of gets swept out of that conversation of number one wide receivers, of course, with what he did with Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. But as he pulled up the numbers here, he put up 100 catches in every single one of his seasons as a Bill. No one caught more balls than him over that span. He's ranked top five in yards and touchdowns during that time as well. He's been a truly brilliant player, a consistent player, an option for, for Josh Allen, who has him, hopefully has a deep threat in Gabe Davis, who's now healthy, right. coming off the injury, who can be a more consistent deep threat option. And then you've got this Kincaid kid who can hopefully be the security blanket right. that Beasley was for that time. Yeah, but still the centerpiece is Steph. Uh, he's he's a dude, right? I mean, he's he can go. And they can they can try and take him away, but can you know they'll find Josh will find a way to get him open, get him the right matchup. The offense seems to be extremely versatile. Uh, Kincaid, like you mentioned, and James Cook are, are gonna get into that mix. Everybody that's going to be on the field in one of those five offensive positions that are eligible are going to be a guy that Josh can go to in a matchup. They're going to be really flexible. They can go two tight ends, one tight end. They can go four wides. They got some guys that can work in the slot. They got to keep Steph happy, um, it sounds like. Yeah, happy and, and healthy is the way. Steph is going to be happy. I think he's going to be really happy. They're going to be really hard to beat again this year. When your team's winning, whether you catch one ball or no balls or 20 balls, you're really happy because that's – you know, these guys invest a lot into it, and, and it's about us, not me. And Steph is one of those guys as well. He's a we guy, not a me guy. And um, and I think that's where, you know, the rhetoric has come from. In fact, I, I think he's trying to be a, listen, listen what are we all going to do here? And uh, he wants hmm. to he try to get some answers. So I think, he, I think he gets a bad rap sometimes because he does stand up and say, what about it? But, man, I think that team loves that about him. I yeah. think they really do love that about him. Well, they love it also by not really going for any of these wide receivers that were up. That's how the team shows that Steph right. is that guy. DeAndre Hopkins yeah. was available. Some people out there do think it was a miss that this team didn't go and secure uh, that elite wide receiver into this offense. Yeah. But, no, Steph is their guy. And if he's happy, he's heard, it sounds like, and he's healthy, then maybe they can go all the way. So that's, yeah. yeah. I think you're right. Not only did they not go out and get a DeAndre Hopkins, there's only three in a in a room that's usually eight or ten guys deep. They only brought three guys back from last year's wide receiver room. You know, uh, Steph Diggs, Gabe Davis, and Khalil Shakir. 
Everybody yeah. else is new. Sherfield, Hardy, right. and they got a bunch, and all the other new guys they brought in, they're all like six, two, they all brought in big dudes. So they had a concerted effort. They, they rinsed that room out uh, and brought in some fresh legs and some fresh guys, and uh, Steph's a huge part of it, and I think he, you see him out there talking to those guys. They're, uh, they're coming together. I, you know, I have high hopes. In fact, I probably have higher hopes for that room this year than I did last year, and Gabe Davis is just a part of it. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite? You look back at all the years. What was it? 13, 14 years? 13, yeah. 13 years. 13 training camps? Yeah. What was the best memory from your favorite one? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were on the forefront of this, you know, kind of the lighter schedule. When Marv Levy was coaching, we'd, we'd have that morning. We had two a days. Yeah. It sounds grueling. We'd have <laughs> Those a two, are a thing of the past. We'd have a morning practice. We'd jump, go out and grab a sandwich go down and play a quick nine holes of golf, <laughs> come back in the afternoon, do a, do a hard practice in the afternoon, and then go back and play the back nine in the afternoon. The best me memory I have is when the guys started chirping about their golf game during stretch. Oh, and all of a sudden we got this bet being put down, this bet put, put, put down, this bet being put down. All of a sudden Bruce Smith has to go out and break 90 at that course. And there's money on it, right? So he's got to go break 90 because he started chirping. So all these guys are in on it. So there's some serious cash on this. Yeah. We go out. What does that mean? Like hundreds of thousands? Uh, no, not hundreds of thousands. Okay. No. But this is a 19, cash. this is a late okay, 80s, early it. 90s. It, so it. it's a different world all right. financially. But inflation. Got so it. we're going to go out there. There's 14 golf carts out there. Oh, there's only one set of clubs. There's all these guys out there watching every shot he took the entire 18 holes. That's amazing. And on the last hole, if he pars it, he wins. If he bogeys it, he pushes. And if, if he doubles it, he loses. It's a par five. He's got his third shot. The crucial shot of the entire thing is his third shot. And he's got to get it on a two putt to par to win. He st my boy sticks it to like four wow. and a half feet, and he wins the he wins the bet. <laughs> so it's pretty big. But that's nothing about football. That, no, that's, but that's, that's one that's of the fun it. things. Yeah. Well, listen, maybe these football players, maybe these Von Millers, these uh, these Quinn and Williams who want to be the Bruce yeah, Smith, yeah. maybe you got to go golfing yeah, in the middle right? of training camp. It was a different thing, and I think our sports science people, our guy Rusty Jones, back in the day, was on the forefront of it, and he had a coaching staff, and it was wasn't easy back then to get the team to listen and say, listen, we need you need to tone it back with these guys mm. and make them fresh and keep it like they're doing now. You're going to have less guys injured in camp. We're going to lose fewer guys to, to injuries. We're going to have everybody fresh and ready at the beginning of the season. And it worked for us. And it seems to be working for a lot of teams now, whether they like it or not, because everybody's kind of forced into it now. We talked earlier about the hype uh, around this Buffalo team sort of evading yeah. it this year. Do you think that's a good thing? Nobody's complaining about it. I mean, it's a it certainly is a thing that you got to deal with every day. And, and, and here where there's so much accessibility with the media and, and, you know, all of us kind of standing around on the sidelines watching practice, the fans, the national media, um, it's the, la the last thing you want to do is have one more thing to discuss about how it is you're the favorite. And that, they dealt with it last year, no question about it. Got off to a good start. I mean, they had a really – they had a phenomenal regular season, um, and they handled it extremely well. But it was an extra thing. And in a season that turned out the way it did, they didn't need an extra thing. Mm. No, I don't think we have the we don't have footage, unfortunately. But I think they took footage of Von Miller. Uh, he's not dressed to practice. He's of course working his way back from injury. He's on the sideline, but he's hitting this dummy. Do we have this footage of him? Yeah. Uh, but what do you make of, of Von Miller? Obviously, he's a huge key. Trey Davis White is as well. But we got to get Von to Von form for this team to win that Super Bowl, I think, and improves this defense. Yeah. How's he looking? And what are your thoughts? I wish I was in as good a shape as Von Miller is now <laughs> with the bed. He's close. I think he's getting close. There, there. You know, off the, the week one is not off the table. Um, I think there's probably some milestones they want him to get through before he comes back and actually starts practicing. I'll say this. I, knowing what I know about this team and how they work things, they'll they'll be putting the brakes. They won't put him out on the field until he's 100%, until they believe, until the medical people believe he's 100%. And they won't let him play even if he feels like he wants to try it and, like, work in slow. But we will have a ramp-up period. We'll get an inkling of when it's going to be well before he does show up. So if it's going to be week one, we're going to know two weeks at least before that game kicks off if Vaughn's going to be a have a shot at playing. Leslie Frazier, the exit, yeah. Sean McDermott taking over. What do you think the biggest differences are going to be? Uh, that remains to be seen. It's a good question. Sean has a reputation for being very 
uh, m more aggressive than Leslie did. Leslie, their their defense was as solid as a rock. Top five defense virtually every year that Leslie was here. They were they were hard mm -hmm. to move the ball on, but they were rarely spectacular, you know. And I think a lot of people, you know, we're always trying to fix what's not broken, and this defense was not broken. Um, but if you're going to do that, you wish maybe uh, more turnovers, more splash plays, okay. uh, more tipped interceptions, you know, that kind of thing. You'd make, like to be you like to have your pass rush show up in the stat, but instead of being a, just a top 10 sack team where you sneak in there at the end, to be up there a team that's like, wow, how many sacks are we going to get today kind of thing. Um, I think that's what people would, would like to see more. Their defense was more than solid. It was an elite defense statistically throughout Leslie Frazier's time here. He's great. Um, but it never, you never really felt like, hey, we didn't get a splash. You know, there's no splash play right. that changed the course Does of the Does Sean game. have that in him? We'll see. I think you got to you got to roll the dice once in a while to get those kind of plays. Now, certainly, this team was when they're loaded and healthy, they've got some star players that could go out and do that and dominate and like take over a game. But as the season wears on, teams have a plan against right. that and they can cope with it. And you know, it gets harder and harder to do as the season wears on. You lose guys or guys are in and out of the lineup. So, but I think for a coaching staff like McDermott. I think he'll roll the dice a little bit more and say, "Listen, they got to deal with us on this on this mm -hmm. play, on this third and medium. We're going to make them make a decision real quick because we're going to put some pressure on them." So I think that'll happen more often than it did with Leslie. But the results are yet to be seen because it's. I think that's a big unknown. I mean, all the teams have optimism. Is this? Sure. Are there any challenges that you're sort of looking to see? Uh, solved out here on the field over the next couple of days or early into the preseason, things that you have questions about. The backfield, of course, certainly one. People want Dalvin to come and uh, join his sure. his brother and all of that with the running, uh, running back, but they seem to be okay with the committee and Cook. Their Cook seems to be Latavius doing really Murray, well. Um, Damian Harris and James Cook, I think they're really happy with those guys. The middle linebacker competition, I, th I think they're treating the middle linebacker competition like the rest of the league is treating the running back room. Wow. It's important, but to step back from an elite middle linebacker to a good middle linebacker is noticeable maybe to guys who study film, but not to the naked eye. You're going you're gonna to be happy with the guy they put in there, and they've got some guys in there I think they have a lot of faith in. Plus, I think the guys behind Tremaine Edmonds, who was here last year, right. To you know, Phil. As good as they could have ever been, they ain't taken the field with Tremaine Edmonds on the team. So they could be a lot better than people might give them credit for. I'm not saying they are. We'll, we'll find out. But even if they were, <laughs> they, you'd never know because they couldn't get on the field. Mm -hmm. So we'll see uh, who can take control of that. I think they're treating that a little bit like one of those things. We'll, we'll pay for good players. But elite is a little bit too pricey for us because we don't think the production of an elite linebacker is higher than a good linebacker mm. enough to pay him the elite money. I have this theory that the entire AFC NFL really is a sort of over the Jets and the offseason hoopla. Do you get that sentiment as a former well, Bill and as someone who's so close to the team? Yeah, it, I don't think the Bills, Patriots, or the Dolphins, I don't think the rest of the AFCs can afford to be over the Jets. Okay. I think they're real. There ain't no question about it. Aaron can play. And th that roster with the quarterbacks they had last year gave the Bills all they wanted. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's justified, just like it was justified for the Bills last year. The Bills went 13-3 and three last year as being that favorite, that hyped-up team. True. They lost three games by a total of eight points, and they gave one to the Vikings. Um, so they were th – that could be the Jets this year. Um, but I think if, you're, if they get out there and they get out to that fast start and – particularly with the schedule rotation that the AFC East has with each other and the NFC East and the AFC West. Yeah. So how, if we're rough. assessing threats here, who's, where have the Jets moved when it comes to in, in, the, in the world of where the, the Chiefs sit, where the Bengals sit, in a brutal game last year uh, that I, I hate think, to bring up here today. Yeah. Sure today we're going to bring Unlike it up. Unlike last year, I think when you're talking about the AFC, you're talking about the Bills but you're talking about the Bills and the Jets and Got the Bills it. and the Dolphins and the Patriots are a wait and see. I think they're they're the team that is off the radar. But the Jets, Dolphins and Bills, I think they're looking at each other like, you know, like like that Spider-Man thing. They're all pointing <laughs> to the other two, right? They're like, you know, um, the, they're there. I think the Jets are in the conversation. I wouldn't be shocked if all three of those teams make a playoff run 
you know, a couple of wild cards in the division thing. I don't think it's going to be possible for an AFC East team, even this team, if they're playing their best, I don't think it's going to be possible for those teams to get the one seed because they're just going to beat each other up too yeah. I think somebody like uh, Baltimore may be able to get it done. Cincinnati may be able to get it done. Um, but it all matters. Week one, West. week yeah. one Jets, all yeah, those, yeah. I mean, it's all it really going to work itself out. I don't think that game's, I don't think, I. <sighs> that's a tough game that for That game Buffalo, at MetLife? Yes, Woo, on 9-11. Juice. With Aaron, oh, man. yeah, it's it's going to be electric. It'll be amazing. Now, last question for you. The Buffalo Bills, I don't know if it's will make it to the Super Bowl or will win the Super Bowl. Let's say we'll win. The Buffalo Bills will win the Super Bowl if what? I think only if they stay healthy. If they stay healthy, they're hard to beat anyway. If they stay healthy and can play like they did last year, the first month and a half of the season, before, you know, week three they had five defensive starters off the field already. Yeah, unbelievable. So if they stay healthy, um, there is no stopping them. And There's Josh, no stopping them. And as they far are, as Josh Allen, his his main thing, his theme that you'd like to bestow upon him going into this next year, take the check down, bro. Just. Kincaid it, bro. Just take the check down. Get it down. to Kincaid, bro. Stay on the field. Just stay on the field. I told him, it's like, it's like playing his golf game. Take the eight. Take the eight off the page. Just take this little one over here so you don't take the eight over here, right? Um, don't take the triple bogey. Just, you know, give yourself a chance all the way down the field. Stay on the field as much as you can. Um, they, let, they were second in the league in drops last year. They were second in the league in turnovers. Those aren't jo- all Josh. Mm-hmm. They turn the, the interceptions are, but the fumbles and the drops are not, in my opinion. If they can cut all those out, man, this is a tough team. I mean, they're they're a, yeah. they're hard, man. They're a hard crew to get off the field. They're a hard team to beat. Um, if the Bills play their best and you play your best, the best you can hope for is a coin flip. I love that. If the Bills play their best flip. and you don't, you're done. Tasker. So. Well said. There you go.